Hi, I'm Lucy Ellis, Senior Editor at Scrib, and I'm here at Bio Europe Spring in Amsterdam, and I'm joined by Pekka Simula, the CEO of Herentis. So thanks for joining me today. Uh, Herentis is the result uh, of a merger between Hermo Pharma and Laurentis Pharma. So how did that come together, and what did the two companies bring to each other? Well, the both companies are <laughs> based on uh, strong science from the University of Helsinki. Mm -hmm. So in that regard, it was a perfect match, because we, as a, as a team, we we believe in the science, we want to base all our work in the strong science and uh, the two professors behind these companies and their inventions, Professor Mart Sarma and Professor Kari Alitalo are both leading scientists in the world in their fields. So uh, putting these two companies together um, was a natural way of having a um, more meaningfully sized company developing assets in the field of neuro, uh, in the field of regenerative medicine, and uh, based on leading science in the world. Um, what are the highlights then from your current pipeline? We have a CDNF, which is a neuroprotective factor, very distinct from the conventional neurotrophic factors, even though the name may suggest otherwise. And uh, that's currently in a very exciting clinical study, uh, clinical proof of concept study in Parkinson's disease really aiming at stopping progression of Parkinson's. Very ambitious goal, but based on strong preclinical data, we believe that we have a, a very, uh, very good chances. And the other asset, lymphectin, is a gene therapy we are developing for the treatment of secondary lymphedema. That's a very poorly known and understood disease, and there are no pharmacological treatments for lymphedema at, at this moment. Again, our aim is to cure lymphedema with this disease-modifying treatment, regenerated treatment that actually repairs damages of the lymphatic system. And the lead asset then being in Parkinson's, that's quite a, a complicated area that's seen limited progress in the last few years. So what are you doing differently there? And what's the clinical trial structure like? The clinical stri strategy is itself, it's, uh, it's uh, kind of usual. We have a randomized placebo control study. And obviously, as in all CNS diseases, there is a strong placebo effect. So we have a long enough treatment period to hope to see a difference between the placebo arm and the, the active arm. But the difference really is in the compound. CDNF is based on a very novel neuroprotective uh, mechanism and we have seen in preclinical data that it, it very strongly works in multiple ways relevant in Parkinson's disease. It very potently alleviates uh, ER stress, endoplasmic reticulum stress. It also directly inhibits neuroinflammation, which is another fashionable area in neurodegenerative diseases. And very importantly, it also directly inhibits the oligomerization of alpha synuclein. Wow. So it even works in alpha synuclein models of Parkinson's disease. So our preclinical data, including rodents and non-human primates, is really strong. And again, we have to, of course, thank the very good collaboration with Professor Sarma and his group at the University of Helsinki. And what are the next steps for that product then? What are the milestones coming up? We hope to fully recruit this study by the end of this year. And then uh, the um, unblinding will take place six months after the uh, dosing of the last patient. So toward the end of uh, 19, we look forward to very exciting clinical data. And the, uh, the other product you mentioned in lymphedema, what's happening there? What stage is that? Uh, we have recently completed a phase one study, a first in human study. Uh, that was already a study we did in real patients. So those were breast cancer associated lymphedema patients. In other words, there were patients who have, uh, as a consequence of breast cancer treatment, developed secondary lymphedema, which means a tremendous swelling of one of the arms. And, and it's, it's a progressive disease that uh, is really deforming and disabling and uh, deserves much more attention than it currently has. And uh, the next step there obviously is a phase two study. The phase one data, the safety has been excellent so far. So we look forward to launching a phase two study, um, hopefully in the near future, that study is already fully funded and that will be a sizable randomized placebo controlled study. So very soon we hope to have two clinical proof of concept studies ongoing. And you're here at Bio Europe Spring, so what's your partnering strategy? What are you looking for? Currently we have developed these assets uh, on our own to reach this point, so we are funded to reach clinical proof of concept with both of these assets. But um, obviously we are a small company with limited resources and the next stage uh, 
would hopefully be to find good partners to, to help us fully uh, exploit these assets. So uh, first of all, in lymphedema, uh, consider um, indications beyond just the breast cancer associated lymphedema, because if it works there, we have a reason to believe that it could also work in other secondary lymphedemas. Yeah. And at the same time, CDNF, uh, there's a lot of exciting preclinical data uh, also in other neurodegenerative diseases, not just Parkinson's disease. Uh, finally, CDNF is a protein that's uh, in the first clinical study administered intracranially. So it's of course not the easiest approach. And, um, and uh, the hope is that in the future, we'd also be able to develop a non-invasive CDNF. That could really be a huge uh, breakthrough in the treatment of Parkinson's disease if the efficacy is retained as we believe. So uh, that would something that would be definitely something where we'd uh, benefit from from uh, partners with strong res strong resources and uh, sharing our belief in the science. And what's the kind of feedback that you've received from people you've been talking to so far? Let's say it's very excited. I have to say it's it's uh, when people see our data they, they uh, really believe it's exciting and I believe that uh, over the next uh, 12 to 24 months we will have very good discussions with uh, interested partners. Um, that's over the next few months but what about long term then? What's the long term goal for the company? Where would you like to see yourselves in a few years? Personally I would like to see ourselves of course uh, continue to be involved in the development of these exciting assets even though uh, maybe together with a, with a partner who brings in expertise and resources that we don't currently have. But at the same time, we have a great team. You know, we have uh, two very exciting biologicals in the development. We only have a 10 person team, so we really have a great team. And uh, I think we all would like to continue uh, kind of leveraging our expertise in uh, repeating the same, so looking for new exciting assets based on global leading science and uh, try to get them translated in the, in the clinic and uh, for the benefit of patients. So a lot to come and a lot of growth happening. Then. Absolutely, but of course that's, that's uh, the future, we don't know that uh, and uh, at this point we'll have to focus on the assets that we have in our development. Okay, well lovely to speak to you and I look forward to finding out more. Thanks, thank, thank you very much.